Hello everyone, welcome to a video on substitution. Now it says here, evaluate the following expression when a is equal to 4, and we've got the expression 3a plus 2. So what do we need to do? Well, we need to evaluate. What that means is find the value of. So we need to work out what value this expression has. So it would just be a numerical value, just a number basically. So when we're substituting, all we're doing is re we're replacing something in our expression. So we're going to replace the variable in our expression with a number. So you can see here that it says a is equal to 4. So all we're going to do is we're going to substitute this a with 4. So it's a bit like in sport. So I've got here an example of a football match where we've got a substitute coming on and he's replacing a player that's already play, been, uh, playing. So just like in sport, we're going to replace or substitute a. So that's going to come out and coming on is the number four because you can see that they are exactly the same thing. A is equal to four. So we're taking off a and we're replacing it. We're substituting it with the number four. So what we've got now is we've got instead of 3a, we've got 3 times 4. So remember, this is multiplication. A lot of people make the mistake of just writing 34 in here. So instead of, you know, just simply uh, sort of putting the 4 next to the 3, this is wrong. This is not 34. This is 3 times 4. Because what this means, this 3a, this means 3 times a. So instead of 3 times a, now it's going to be 3 times 4. So it's going to be 3 times 4 and then plus 2. Well, we can work what that work out what that is. 3 times 4 is 12. 12 plus 2 is 14. So 14 would be my answer. So we have evaluated the expression because we have found a value. OK, I'm going to go through another couple of examples. So evaluate the following expressions when g is equal to 5. And we've got two expressions to evaluate. So if we take a look at the first one, we've got 50 minus 2g. So just like before, all we're doing is we're replacing our variable with a number. So you can see here that g is equal to 5. So we're just going to substitute g. That's going to come out of our expression. And we're going to substitute that with the number 5. So 5 is going to come into our expression. So now what we've, what we've got is we've got 50 minus 2. Instead of 2g, it's going to be 2 times 5. So 2 times 5. You can see all we've done is we've replaced g with the number 5. So now we just need to evaluate this. And we always do multiplication before subtraction. So if we think about our orders of operation, multiplication always comes before subtraction. So we need to do 2 times 5 first. Well, that is 10. So we're going to have 50 minus 10. And 50 minus 10 is 40. So 40 is going to be our answer for this one here. Now, if we look at the second expression, again, we're going to be um, substituting g for the number 5. So this time you can see that g appears twice in our expression. So every time we see a g, we're just replacing that with the number 5. So we're going to have 20 divided by 5. 20 divided by 5. And then we're going to add on, instead of g squared, it's going to be 5 squared. So hopefully you can see... With my colours, I'm just sub substituting g for 5 on both occasions. So 20 divided by 5, well that's nice, that's, that's, uh, that's nicely divisible, that gives me 4. And then we're going to add on 5 squared, well 5 squared is 25. And now 4 plus 25 is 29, so that will be my answer. Okay, so it's over to you now. Evaluate the following expressions when n is equal to 4, and you've got 9 different expressions to evaluate. So pause the video and see if you can answer these questions yourself first. OK, I'm assuming you've paused the video, so let's go through these together now. So question one, we've got n plus 5. So all we're doing is we're substituting the letter n with the number 4. So instead of n plus 5, well, it's going to be 4 plus 5. So nice and easy to begin with. 4 plus 5, or well, that gives us 9. Question two, 6n. So again, this means 6 multiplied by n. So instead of 6 times n, we're going to have 6 times our value for n, which we know is 4. So it's going to be 6 times 4, and 6 times 4 is 24. So that is my answer. Question 3 is n squared. So instead of n squared, well, it's going to be 4 squared. So it's going to be 4 squared. And 4 squared, that's just 4 times 4, which is 16. Question 4, 3n plus 10. 
So we've got 3 times n, well that's going to be 3 times 4. So the first part is 3 times 4, and then we're just going to add on 10. So let's do the 3 times 4 first. 3 times 4, well that gives us 12. Now it's 12 plus 10, and 12 plus 10 is 22. Question 5 is 20 minus 2n. So we're going to start off with 20, and we're going to subtract 2. Instead of 2 times n, it's going to be 2 times 4. 2 times 4. And again, this is where our order of orders of operation come into play. We're going to do the 2 times 4 first, because that's multiplication. 2 times 4 is 8, so it's going to be 20 minus 8, and 20 minus 8 is 12. Question 6, n divided by 4 plus 99. So we know n is 4, so it's going to be 4 divided by 4. So 4 divided by 4, and then plus 99. Well, 4 divided by 4 is just 1. So it's 1 plus 99, and that is 100. Question 7 is 2n squared. And this is a type of question where a lot of people go wrong on. And it's all to do with bid mass. So if we think about our orders of operation, we always do our indices before multiplication. So this is going to be 2 multiplied by n squared. So it's going to be 2 multiplied by, instead of n squared, well, that's going to be 4 squared. So 2 times 4 squared. And the reason why I say a lot of people go wrong is they will do 2 times n first and then square the answer. So we always have to square this value for n first and then multiply by 2. So it's going to be 2 multiplied by, or 4 squared, 4 times 4 is 16. So it's going to be 2 times 16, and that will give us 32. Question 8 is n minus 3n. So here we've got two instances of n that we're going to substitute. So n is 4, so it's going to be 4. And then we're going to subtract, instead of 3 times n, it's going to be 3 times 4. So we're going to do the multiplication first, because of, we always do multiplication before subtraction. 3 times 4 is 12, so it's going to be 4 subtract 12, and 4 subtract 12 is negative 8. And last but not least, we've got question 9, which is n, and then in brackets we've got n plus 7. So again, we've got two instances of n that we're going to substitute. So we've got 4 outside the brackets, and then inside our brackets we're going to have 4 plus 7. We're going to have 4 plus 7, I'm trying to keep colour coordinated. So we always do the brackets first. So 4 plus 7 is 11. So we're going to have 4. And then in our brackets, we're just going to have 11. But what this means, when we've got a number outside of a set of brackets, that just means multiply. So this is exactly the same as 4 times 11. Let me just write it out like this. 4 times 11. And 4 times 11 is 44. So how did you get on with those nine questions? If you did get all of them correct, give yourself a pat on the back. If you got one or two wrong, maybe it was the orders of operation that let you down. So always think about bid mass uh, when you're thinking about the order in which you're performing the operations. I'm going to do one more video on this topic where instead of just looking at one variable to replace, we're going to look at expressions where we need to substitute two, three or even four variables. So hopefully you'll join me for that video and thanks again for watching. Take care.